for me, uh, whether it's personal or whether it's in society, for me, nonviolence is harmony at each stage and, uh, you know, between small, uh, in small incidents or in larger society. So like in the family, in the household, uh, but mainly what I have been working on is uh, a kind of industrial harmony so that everybody has a share in what is happening. There should not be a question of employers versus employees or uh, it should, so it should all industry should be in the hands of the producers. India's uh, great contribution, I feel, was to make ordinary cloth uh, exportable. So it was uh, cheap enough to give a good living to the producers. And it was, uh, of course, cotton cloth has always been wanted everywhere. But ordinary people in places like Egypt and uh, even the empire of Rome, they were able to afford it. It was a completely nonviolent economics. Uh, what happened was that the British introduced uh, machines into various stages of cotton making. They introduced machines on the field to separate the uh, seeds from the lint. Uh, of course, they introduced spinning machines and weaving machines, but that came later. But with the introduction of machinery, uh, more capital was needed for the machines. Otherwise, it was always a very low capital thing. Everybody could afford that small spinning wheel and uh, could buy the cotton. We had the local markets and the cotton farmers used to come to the uh, markets with their cotton and the ordinary weavers used to be able to buy that cotton and to be able to spin it at home and so on. But with the introduction of big machinery, you needed uh, capital for that. That's right. And so when you needed capital, then you needed an intermediary who would provide that capital. You cannot disconnect the industrial revolution and colonialism, as far as I'm concerned, my thinking is concerned. Because uh, India provided the market for that yarn. So once uh, the uh, machine started making yarn, it was on a huge scale. Whereas, you know, in India before that, we've always had small scale on uh, the, there'll be a huge number of small scales. So it will all add up to the large scale, but it will not be the similar, exactly the same thing. Not the very, it's very different. The scale, even though it is large, it is very different from that machine, which produces the same kind of uh, yarn. So where would this machine spun yarn be exported to? it was to its biggest colony. So India was considered the biggest customer of the products of the industrial revolution. So that's why I feel you can't separate the two. So they oh. started- No, they, no, go ahead, please. They so they start. started sending yarn to India and you know that lovely, that pathetic letter which Gandhi reproduces in Young India from the, uh, uh, spinner who used to support her aged in-laws and daughters on her spinning is not able to do it any longer because the yarn which is uh, now brought into the market is sold cheaper than her yarn. And the so-called you know, advanced or modernized machinery only just make it faster and faster. Yeah. And so more productivity. And the productivity is at the cost of the farmer. We, we, of course, all know of the farmer's suicides. And most of the farmers who commit suicides are actually cotton farmers. And the reason they commit suicide, I mean, why are farmers committing suicide when they've been growing cotton for thousands, literally thousands of years with no trouble, is that they have to produce a kind of, a kind of fiber which is not suited to Indian farming systems. So these are the small steps we've been taking towards that self-sufficiency, that democracy in production, and you know what you would say, the non-violence uh, in production, to reintegrate the whole business of making cotton cloth back into society as it used to be, into local uh, 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 communities and the capabilities of local pe people. There is a huge 
number of people who value cotton cloth and they always did and they always will. So why are we not promoting our sustainable cotton cloth industry, the handloom industry as a sustainable industry for the future? There's no doubt about it that uh, violence is increasing, but uh, there is a system. It's like that Bakasura story. It's like the system pits one against the other. You know, everything becomes a race. India is pitted against China. The rich are pitted against the poor. The, uh, you know, so there's uh, uh, always somebody or something against which you are pitted. Well, nobody, so then people give up the idea of working together. And so that's what, that's where the violence starts. Yeah. And it starts in the household. It starts between individuals. It's not just only at the high level and it just grows. And because you get used to the idea that you have to be constantly fighting for your rights. Our group is a very practical group. So I think you have to think more about, you know, what are the steps to be taken towards a nonviolent society?